What's up, people? How's it going? Welcome to Plant Strong Live. That man right next to me is New York Times bestselling author Rip Esselstyn, also the founder of Plant Strong and Plant Strong Foods. And we're here every week to bring you a little bit of knowledge, bring you a little bit of uh, stuff to help fuel your Plant Strong lifestyle. And today we're talking about greens. How you doing, Rip? You feeling green today? Well, of course I am. Look at the shirt I'm wearing, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing it loud and proud. Kale University, that's right. Hey, Kale, yeah, Kale, yeah. You know what? Speaking of which, I, I I need to go off on a little bit of a diatribe about about these this shirt. So in two thousand and ten, when I first started my relationship with Whole Food Market stores as a healthy eating ambassador, I had a very very good friend. Her name's Ann Stevenson, and I asked her, "Can you make me a really cool?" t-shirt because I, I have the ability to get these and sell them at all. At the time, it was like 350 whole food market stores. And she said, sure, absolutely. And so she came out with kale, just that, just, just like this kale, okay. which obviously is a play on Yale. And it was an absolute hit. It was an, a, a sensation. And we were the first ever to do it. And this is back in 2010. Wow. And then you you know the story, right? Yeah. Now you you can go you can sell you can buy kale t-shirts at uh, Target. Beyonce has a line. I mean, it's crazy. You know, it's too bad we weren't able to trademark it, but kale's a hard name to trademark. <laughs> it really is. And you know, one uh, person, uh, Kim's asking how she gets it. I don't even know if they're for sale anymore. Well, right we now. we actually do. We have a partnership with uh, Plant Athletic. Dot com and just it's plant athletic spelled like that dot com and you should see our eat strong food shirts and i think there's some kale shirts there too okay yeah but they're you know and they're cool and you can get you can get whatever color you want if you want a blue if you want a green if you want a, a purple a black i mean i got everything under the sun incredible yeah so well you know speaking of which i mean this is uh it is so important Corey, that people start consuming their green leafies. Green leafies are absolutely, they're the bomb. They yeah. are absolutely the bomb when it comes to just being like, you know, I like to say that there's no such thing as a, as a superfood, but if there was now Dan Buettner would arm wrestle me over this, like Dan would say, Rip, come on, man, it's beans. It's beans. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I would say, you know, Dan, I think if we were to actually look at the science, the straight science, It'd be green leafies. Wow. And I'm and and we'll talk about what I mean by green leafies here in, in a sec. Yeah. yeah, I think you know, folks. I, I want you to know that this is a more interactive show. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've been doing some presentations because you guys wanted to see that. Talked about protein. We talked about fiber. But today we're talking about greens. So as you have questions, feel free to pop them in. I'll share them up on the screen. So many people watching from around the world. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, we want this to be a, a bit of a conversation back and forth. Now, we know we can't bring you in on the show uh, just because of the limitations with the software. But, guys, we we very much want to be a resource for you. So if you have any questions about greens, um, you know, of course, let us know. For me, Rip, I'm always, you know, thinking – people think greens, they think it has to be a salad, right? Right. But the right. truth is, is like not only are there tons of different types of greens – and uh, different benefits, nutritional benefits from each type of green, but there's just so many different ways you can use them and incorporate them into your life, right? Absolutely, Corey. And, you know, um, before I talk about like the practicality of greens and how actually I incorporate them into, into my life and my family incorporates them into, to, into you know, their life, um, I just like to do it just a maybe a five minute overview of green leafies. Yes. Uh, and so bear with me here as I go off on a little bit of a diatribe here. So, you know, I just, again, I want to say that when it comes to a plant-based food, I think that green leafies and when I let's, let's actually, let's backtrack for a second. When I'm talking, when, when you and I are talking, when we're talking green leafies, I'll just give you like, I'm going to give you a list of about 20, right now okay. and that, that, we're, that we identify as green leafy vegetables. So Swiss chard, right? 
Swiss chard, you know, there's a lot of different varieties, wonderfully colorful. There's rainbow Swiss chard. There's green Swiss chard. I mean, it is nuts. Then, of course, we've got kale, right? The, look at the shirt I'm wearing. You know, you got Russian kale, you got dinosaur kale, you got curly kale. There are crazy amounts of kale out there. You got collards and collard greens. I mean, wow, these things are as big as elephant ears. Um, and they make for wonderful wraps, yeah. um, especially for people, Corey, that are trying to lose weight. And, and we want to stay away from the more calorie dense bread. Uh, that's about, I mean, if you guys, um, remember from calorie density, bread is about 1200 to 1500 calories per pound. Yeah. Guess what a collard green leaf is How much? 60, How much? 60 How much? calories no per way. pound. So, so yeah. So if we're trying to lose copious amounts of weight, I want you doing the collard, uh, wraps instead of, instead of the, uh, in the bread. We got beet greens, right? You know, that, that come out of, they, they used to, Corey, they used to throw away the, 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 the tops of beets. And we now know that beet greens are just an absolute powerhouse. Um, they're wonderful. Napa cabbage, uh, you know, wonderful for stir fries and stuff like that. But Napa cabbage, cabbage, of course, everybody knows about, you know, Popeye's, you know, favorite food, which is spinach. And spinach is, is, is a wonderful green leafy, um, bok choy, uh, fantastic for stir fries, turnip greens, kind of in the similar family as beet greens. And uh, now here's one that a lot of people, you kind of love them or you hate them and that's Brussels sprouts. I'd love to oh, talk, yeah. to ask you like what your family thinks of those. Then of course we've got like, to me, it's like Mr. and Mrs. All American broccoli. Right. I mean, yeah. what home doesn't have broccoli in it some way, somehow, whether it's yeah. fresh, whether it's frozen, you got cilantro, right? A lot of people have a hard time with cilantro. There's about 10% of the population. They got that gene that all of a sudden they eat it and they're like, Oh my God, it tastes like soap. I can't handle cilantro. Right. Wow. Wow. Parsley. It's funny. Parsley. I don't have much parsley, but parsley is a very interesting, you know, little, you know, kind of side, uh, cauliflower. A lot of people don't know that cauliflower is actually a green leafy. Uh, wow. and it's, it's in okay. that family. It's in that okay. cruciferous family. So cauliflower is wonderful. You know, my favorite right at this, at the moment, and I kind of go through phases, uh, Corey is right now it is arugula, right? Me too. Me too. It's totally arugula, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Woo! yeah and, it's like peppery and oh, it's amazing. It's just it so is, deep. It is spicy. Yeah. And, you know, over across the pond in the UK, they call it, you know, rocket, rocket fuel. But arugula, I can't get enough of it. Nice. A asparagus. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Asparagus yeah. Yeah. as well. Uh, you know, um, actually, Jess and I had a uh, Snackables episode where we talked all about asparagus. So if you guys want to do a deep dive into asparagus, check out the Plant Strong podcast. Uh, maybe about, I don't know three or four months ago, all about asparagus. And then you got watercress, you got radicchio, musana, mescalum, uh, escarole, dand dandelion green. So it's it's vast, it's wonderful. And and I say all that before I, I go into my diatribe, Corey, because unfortunately most Americans are not eating any kind of green leafies. They're not they're not getting them into into their into their into their bodies. They haven't introduced them into their world. And it is, it's essential if we want to take our health and our vitality uh, to the next level. So, so they rule the roost in the plant-based kingdom when it comes to being just a nutritional powerhouse. And, um, you know, I truly believe whether, you know, you have heart disease or whether you're a world-class athlete, these introducing three to six servings of green leafies a day can absolutely up your game to a whole new level. So let's talk about on a macronutrient and micronutrient level, why we were so jazzed about green leafies. And then let's talk about ways to, to actually bring these into our life. So one of the great things about green leafies, and I mentioned them with the collard wraps, is they are low calorie food. So which means we can eat 
three to six servings a day. And if you're lucky, <laughs> think about it. Let's say we have six servings, averages 60 calories a serving. We're talking that's like not even 400 calories, Corey. Oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah, you can eat as much as you want almost. Well, no, not almost. You can <laughs> eat as much as you want, right? So, I mean, that's good. Now, they're also, they're low fat. And, and the fats that they do have, Corey and, and gang, are the, uh, the, um, the polyunsaturated omega-3s that we so need as human beings. Uh, so, for example, a lot of people don't know, they're low in fat, but they're not fat-free. So, for mm -hmm. example, kale, Corey, I'm going to put you on the spot like you know how I love to do. Hit me up. All right. And everybody else that's there, what percentage fat do you think kale is? So, if I was to eat 100 calories of, of kale, what number of calories would be coming from fat? And let, why don't you give it five, 10 seconds so people can write it into the uh, the chat room here. Okay. All right. I won't answer yet. I do have a number in my head, but we're going to give you guys a couple seconds. Let us know what percentage out of a hundred percentage, what percentage do you think is out of a hundred? Yeah. Uh, ooh, Marley says zero. Uh, somebody wants to know, will this be recorded? Yeah, it's going to be recorded. Yeah, it'll be uh, recorded. Ooh, uh, Judy and Sarana, Luke and, and uh, Mark, you guys are really close. It's 11%. It's 11%. I was going to say three, 11% though. Okay, good. Yeah, 11%. All right. So, so we're low in fat, but the fat that we do have is almost all exclusively the polyunsaturated fatty acids that we need. Uh, carbohydrates. It is a wonderful source of carbohydrates. Um, so it's high in carbohydrates. It's, I mean, yes, calorie for calorie wise, it's low in calories. So you have to eat a lot, but the calories that you get from green leafies are anywhere at the low end, 25, 30% protein on the high end, like spinach is sitting around 51% of his calories coming from protein. Okay. So, so the reason I say that is if you look calorie for calorie, they are some of the best sources of protein on the planet. And Again, look at, you know, look at the herbivores that subsist on green leafies, whether it's, you know, elephants, rhinos, hippos, and they're right. I mean, they get all, all the protein, all the carbs, the fats, everything they need from gr green leafies. So yep. low in fat, high in carbs, high in protein, and absolutely uh, wonderful from a macronutrient source. Let's talk micronutrients. If you guys remember micronutrients are vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, antioxidants, and fiber. They don't have any calories, but they're essential for us to take our health to the next level. So vitamins, I'm just gonna like throw out some stuff here just so you can start to get jazzed like with, with these things. So okay. green leafies, they are loaded with beta carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A. Our body can synthesize it into vitamin A and that's wonderful. It, Green leafies, Corey, they are spilling over with vitamin C, which is absolutely vital uh, to our body's healing process, as well as forming blood vessels, cartilage, muscle, and collagen in our bones. So you're not going to be like uh, getting, what's what's the shortage of vitamin C called? Scurvy? <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember when they would go across the oceans and the ships and they come down with scurvy and they realized all they needed was some lemons or limes or something like that, a little bit of vitamin C and took care of that. Yeah. So we, we don't have to worry about scurvy. That's a good thing. All right. Uh, an absolute terrific source of vitamin E, which actually, funny enough, is usually found in high fat foods. Okay. And it helps maintain healthy skin and eyes and is essential for the strengthening of our immune system. Green leafies have really handsome amounts of vitamin K, for example, like in Swiss chard, which is essential for bone health uh, because it mixes so well with vitamin D to strengthen our bones. So remember, you need that one-two punch of vitamin D. And remember, gang, the best way to get vitamin D is a little bit of sunshine, but that mixes really well with vitamin K in those green leafies to strengthen our bones. And remember, you know, we got a almost a pandemic of, of weak bones here in this country 
Yeah. And it's primarily because we're sitting too much. All right. Yeah. Not, yeah. not, not because of a lack of sunshine or vitamin D right. we have, I mean, green leafies, they have a beautiful amount of B vitamins, including the B vitamin uh, B9, which is also folate that helps our body make new cells. So that's very exciting. Now let's move on to minerals. All right. Okay. Okay. Very, very quickly, you know, minerals like potassium, magnesium, iron, um, which are loaded in these green leafies, for example, spinach. And I want to just reiterate here, minerals, there's 17 major and minor minerals, Corey. And where do minerals come from, my man? The soil. They come from the soil. They and are. where and where do green leafies grow? In that beautiful, delicious soil. And so what do you think from the soil comes up into their stems, into their roots, and into their wonderful green leafies. What do you think? That's sunlight, right? Is that what you're talking about? Well, what I'm saying is what comes up into them besides the sunlight is all all these minerals, right? So the best absorbable and retainable form of iron, calcium, potassium comes from your green leafies. Now, I'm going to put a little asterisk there because there isn't an exception. And that exception is some of the green leafies that are high in something called oxalates that we've heard. And it basically blocks the absorption of certain minerals like calcium. And for example, one green leafy that's high in oxalates that even though it's like really high in calcium, it's not a great absorber of calcium in our bodies is spinach. Okay. All right. But but you offset that by if you're eating like kale, Swiss chard, Napa cabbage, some of those, they don't, ha- they're, they're very low in oxalates. So there's not an issue there. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about um, antioxidants. There is a river, Corey, river of antioxidants flowing in green leafies. And let's remember Plants on average have 64X, 64 times more antioxidants on average than animal-based products. And these antioxidants that are flowing in these green leafies, they are beautiful at busting free radicals and protecting us from oxidative stress, which is also known as rusting out, right? Okay. Which we know all the cars in the Northeast do. Um, These antioxidants because they're so anti-inflammatory, they're also loaded with bioactive compounds that reduce inflammation like quercetin, camphorol, carotenoids like lutein, and check this one out, zeaxithin that are in kale and broccoli. And these, they help to restore imbalances within our bodies and they help, catch this, prevent the onset of cataracts and macular degeneration. Wow by shielding our eyes from the free radical damage caused by the sunlight's UV rays. So it's almost like it's almost like they put sunglasses on top of our eyes, right? How cool is that? <laughs> and then let's move on to uh, phytonutrients. Green leafies have a waterfall. So we had a river of antioxidants. Okay. Now we got a waterfall of phytonutrients. There are over 15,000 known phytonutrients and Corey, I'm going to put you to the test again. Yeah. What are, I mean, phytonutrients, what are phytonutrients? Are you asking me? I'm going to have to Google that one. No, no, well, then don't Google it. Don't Google it. Phyto is a big fancy word for plant and obviously nutrients, nutrients. So it's basically plant chemicals or plant nutrients. Yep. So the reason I say that and the reason why I wanted to like push you to the test is because people, phytonutrients, and there's over 15,000 of them. They only exist in plants. Okay. They don't exist in animal products, only plants. And they play a very similar role to antioxidants in preventing DNA damage, restoring balance to our systems, and preventing yeah. oxidative stress, slowing down the aging process, and keeping chronic Western diseases at bay. And, and basically, you look at any whole plant-based food that is bursting with color and you know there's some sort of 
a different phyto, phytonutrient, phytochemical that's there that's present. So for example, in cauliflower, you got isole, you got insoles and isocyanates, right? That are loaded in that cauliflower and these green leafies that help detoxify cancer causing agents and impede tumor development. So, you know, the, the more you get into all the things, the crazy, crazy ass things that green leafies can do for us, it's just mind numbing, right? And then of course, and we had a whole topic on this, I think it was two Fridays ago, Corey, and that was fiber, yeah. right? Green leafies, great source of fiber, and just about every American needs more fiber in their life. So that, that was my diatribe. It was more than two minutes, but you know, there it was. So I think what we should talk about now, Corey, let's talk about ways that, that you and I and everybody on this call can get green leafies into their life. All right. Yes. yes. So why don't we start with one of my favorite things to do? And I'm going to give a little um, unabashed plug here for our chilies and stews. Okay. Right. But so I will, on a bed of brown rice, I will pour out either our Indian lentil stew, our firehouse chili, our creamy white bean chili, our uh, Thai carrot chickpea stew. Before I throw it in the microwave, because remember, this is the quickest lunch and dinner you could ever imagine. Before I throw it in the microwave, I will shred up, Corey, I will shred up, for example, a half a head of kale. Okay. Finally, finally shred it up. And then I will take two to three handfuls, throw it in with the brown rice, with a whole carton of one of those guys, and yeah. then stir it up. I put it in there for a minute and a half. And Corey, the reason I love it so much is that for a lot of people, you know, these green leafies, they're bitter. They don't have a great flavor. Yeah. You can't even taste them. And wow. now you've gotten just in one, one bowl, you now have a good two servings of green leafies, right? That you just powered down. So that's right. one way. Do you, I mean, now I'll, I'll, I'll bat it to you. What about yeah. you? <laughs> uh, with with how I do how I do my green leafies in general, or is there a specific like time of day you're thinking about? No, I'm thinking if you've got like a little um, a little a little trick or a little twist or a little you know a little hack here for people to get their green leafies because I got a list of about ten here. I can keep powering through. Right. So so we talked about arugula being one of my favorites, and I will tell you that if you mix it with a little bit of lemon and a little bit of pepper together those are some of my favorites now you can do like a, a balsamic vinegar or something along those lines but it's not really needed if you have the right fruits together so i will take my arugula i yeah. will do a little bit of lemon a little bit of pepper i will I, I like a creaminess right so i'll do like a quarter of an avocado uh i'll put that in there and then some tomatoes and quite honestly that's it it's that simple for me that's an incredible snack and I feel incredibly fueled. There's a peppery, lemony, creamy aspect to it. And then of course the lycopene and everything else from the uh, tomatoes, it's a really solid meal. So look at you go, look at you go. All right. right, I love it, I love it. Yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna give another unabashed, you know, kind of, so on top of the plant strong pizza crust, okay. I put on the sauce, I will load it up. And I mean load it up, with whatever green leafy I have. I don't care if it's Swiss chard. I don't care if it's arugula. I don't care if it's spinach, kale, but I want you to know if it's spinach, because that stuff will basically um, disappear, you got to yeah. put in three times as much as you think you need because unlike kale, kale is like spinach with heft. And yeah. so with kale, you like you basically whatever you put down there, that's kind of for the most part how it's going to look. But so I okay. love I love topping all my pizzas with green leafies. Yeah. Right? You got to get aggressive on top after, of after though after it comes out of the oven if you bake it right. No, actually I like doing it. I like doing it when I bake it. Actually, okay, okay. Yeah. Now, but but I will say it depends on the green leafy. So for example, if I'm doing arugula, nah, I'm putting that on after. But yeah. if I'm doing spinach or kale or like asparagus, let me look, broccoli, 
right? Yeah. These are all great things to put on top. Um, same thing with um, beet greens. Yeah. So uh, next thing is, Corey, do you like mashed potatoes? Uh, love it. I have an Instant Pot recipe that I use. and I just Okay. okay. So I love taking warm, hot mashed potatoes, slicing up. Again, I don't care what the green leafy is, but the hack here, the trick is you got to make it fine. I don't like big chunks of any green leafies. So I will cut it up fine and I will throw it in two big handfuls into that mashed potato bowl, stir it up. And now I got my mashed potatoes and I am like, I'm so happy. Um, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, yours too, is probably rice and beans extravaganza, right? So you got the brown rice, you got the black beans, you got the sliced tomatoes, bell peppers, green onions. And then what I like doing, Corey, now I don't like putting my green leafies on top. I, I, I find it gets in the way. I oh. like putting it underneath my bed of brown rice. Yeah. And so, and then it kind of starts to warm up and it kind of, um, it, it's a little bit more friendly that way. So, yeah. so, all right. So that's another one. Thanksgiving time is right around the corner. Put your green leafies, like massive amounts into that stuffing. Put it into your stuffing. Um, you know, if you're doing, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, just, yeah, the stuffing. Cause nobody here is making a turkey, but if you are making a turkey, right. Yeah. I mean, put it in there in the, in the turkey with the stuffing or the tofurkey that you have. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I would say two, two times a week, Corey, we saute green leafies. Usually it's kale, it's dinosaur kale or curly kale. And I, all I do is I take uh, I put um, a whole um, head, uh, I slice it up finely again, throw it in the my um, uh, iron, uh, God, <laughs> I'm trying. Iron, iron. It's not an iron chef. Really. No, 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 my, my, uh, my, my skillet, my, my, my skillet. Okay, I, throw, okay. I throw it in there and I use a little bit of our brass, you know, I, so I love whether it's the sweet corn, whether it's the sofrito, put a little bit of there in with the, uh, with the, uh, the kale or the Swiss chard or the beet greens and, and then a little bit of salt and pepper. And that is it. And it takes it to the next level. It really helps upgrade it. Um, now here's one that I'm going to probably catch people a little off guard with this one, but believe it or not, I have gotten to the point, Corey, and I, you're going to think that I'm crazy where I actually like putting green leafies into my rips, big bowl cereal. How, what? how weird is that? Right. Okay. It's a sweet okay. bowl. And I was inspired by my mom who, if you guys go to my Instagram channel, uh, rip at rip Esselstyn, you'll see my mom inspired me. She's got this savory bowl that she makes with steel cut oats shiitake mushrooms, nutritional yeast, and like three or two massive handfuls of shredded kale with sriracha at the very, very end. And it is incredible. It wow. is incredible. Okay. But I started, I started like slicing up either spinach or kale and throwing it in my big bowl. And you know what? It ain't no thing. It's like, it's cool. It's a cool thing to do. Salads. I mean, let's start having more salads at night using some of these amazing green leafies. My favorite salad now is a combination of dinosaur kale and arugula. Just okay. can't, can't get enough of it, but salads, right? I mean, I'm all over it. A trick that I, that I learned from my mother, Corey is, um, so before you take out pasta, if you're making a, a big thing of pasta, throw all, all kinds of green leafies in that pasta water with your pasta before you take it out, like two minutes before you take that pasta out of the pasta water and it cooks with it, you put it in the strainer and now you got all your pasta with all your green leafies. Mm -hmm. And then you put it on your plate, you put on your pasta sauce and now it's just loaded with these green leafies. It's, it's, it's really nice. Um, I'm going to yeah. be honest with you, man. Like, you know, like I, I have one way of doing things with, with green leafies and I, and that's it. It's either broccoli or it's like arugula for me. And, you know, I guess when I'm eating my tacos and stuff like that, and guys, let me know if I'm, if I'm not alone here, because I, I am so inspired 
first of all, by your excitement about greens in general, oh, yeah. but also like the variety, right? I think you're expanding my mind to like, I'm only eating like less than 1% of the actual greens and, and I'm eating them regularly, but this is how you avoid things getting boring or stale, right? You got to try, try new things and get out there and, and give it a shot. So I, I really appreciate this conversation because I feel like if it's not yeah. broccoli or arugula, like I'm kind of limited, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, and also let's call a spade a spade. I mean, I think that the most popular green leafies are probably broccoli, cauliflower, kale, arugula, beet Ice greens. Well, yeah. Well, even, uh, yeah, that's right. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so Dorinka, Dorinka asked, you know, what variety of kale goes into the steel cut oats? You know, any, I don't care. Any kind, right? Do the Dorinka kale in there. But my mom likes using curly kale. I, I prefer dinosaur kale. I find it's not as unruly. Um, so let me also say romaine lettuce. I mean, I also, that used to be my go-to for salads was romaine lettuce. Yeah. I mean, the, it's so hearty. Corey, you can get those those three romaine lettuce heads, you know, and they will live in your refrigerator for half a year. <laughs> oh yeah. I like guys. And, and, and I want you, you know, i said iceberg. It's almost like a bad word here. If you're eating iceberg lettuce, it's not that we don't love you. It's just that you want to get the most bang for your buck. And I feel like iceberg lettuce is the equivalent of eating water or I'm sorry, drinking water or, or air quite honestly. And so if you sub that out for like a romaine, you're yeah. adding so much and you're really, it's a similar texture, right? But it's more, more hearty and definitely more nutrients in that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm just looking at a comment here by Matt Rivera saying Japanese miso soup with cabbage and spinach in it. You know, I mean, oh, I, again, I love any soup, any soup that I make, any soup it's got at the very end, it's got green leafies going into it again. I don't care what, so romaine lettuce, you know, what you want to do is you want to break it off, use it as a big, like spoon with your, with your night, nice, clean hummus. Wow. So it makes wow. for a great dipper, a great dipper, uh, especially on road trips. Again, I'll go back to collar wraps. We talked about this at the top of the show, Corey. But, you know, collards, what you want to do, and, and, and if you want to, I learned this from Drina Burton, and she was on the podcast a couple months ago. But she will take a teapot, and she'll just take that collard green and put it right over the teapot. It's, it's got a little steam coming out of it just for like a minute. And then, then she wraps whatever she wants in that collard green. You can also throw it in, you know, in a skillet with a little bit of water and just for about a minute or two, just to kind of bring up the, the bright green of that collard and make it a little bit more pliable and friendly to the mouth. Uh, and you also want to remove that stem from that collard green. Uh, but yeah, so that's another thing. And then of course, Corey, open face sandwiches. I could live on open face sandwiches and I always put down, you know, on top of that hummus, I'll put either spinach, arugula, kale, um, you know, diced up Swiss chard, something like that. And, um, and then burgers, whenever I'm having a burger, I always put green leafies in my burger, but those are, that's like just off the cuff. That's about 10, 10 or 12 different ways to get green leafies into your day. And again, you know, my father wants his heart patients, Corey, eating six servings a day. Wow. And if you don't mind, I want to just go into like one minute on the science. And that's because my dad is a stickler for wanting his patients to bring their endothelial cells, which is the innermost lining of our 65,000 miles of vessels, bringing those endothelial cells back to life. And the best way to do that is with nitric oxide. And the precursor, one of the great things that allows our body to produce nitric oxide are the nitrates that are naturally occurring in green leafies. And so what happens is we start chewing those, those green leafies, those nitrates get turned to nitrites down in our stomachs. And then from our stomachs, they go out and they turn into nitric oxide. And so again, green leafies are magical. They're just magical, magical, magical. So, yeah. Um, um, now, now, I'd love to answer a couple of questions. And then I want to tell you, Corey, how my family, because I went around the dinner table last night and I asked each one of my family members, what are your favorite green leafies? And everyone had a little different response. Okay. 
Um, and I want to let everybody know too, that I am asking yeah. offline when you see me look over here, I'm asking my team, yeah. we can give you guys because we have a lot of like guides and freebies and giveaways and I want to give you guys something. So hang out till the end. I'm going to figure that out right now. I'm trying to decide which one has the best, you know, uh, bit of greens in it. So that's what I'm asking our friends right now. Like which one's got the most greens, you know? So we have a lot yeah. of great guides. We, they're totally free. want to give them to you. I also, guys, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about a very special deal that we have going on right now on the website. So near the very end, I'm going to let you know about that. We are actually making room for a brand new product coming in. We can't tell you. Maybe if Rip wants to tell you, that's up to him. But just hang out till the end. Give us a few more minutes because we, we want to tell you about it. And it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a no, great I don't, I don't want to tell them until I can show them. All right. Okay. Okay. So you, I think you've done the perfect amount of tease right there. But Marley, Marley, I, I thank you so much for geeking out on the science. And I'm really glad to hear that, that this has shifted you to go more plant-based. You know, you are up in your game. Uh, blueberry, green leafies, leafy greens. I don't know. It's interchangeable. It's all good. Um, you know, uh, Marley, Marley. Yeah. You just started sprouting broccoli sprouts. The sulforaphane that's in those broccoli sprouts is insane. It's like a hundred X what it is in broccoli, you know, way to go sprouting rocks. Um, yeah. My friend, Doug Evans is a huge, huge sprouter. Yeah. And we had yeah. him on the podcast a couple months ago as well. Um, I'm going to put a couple questions up here that I've starred. Okay. From some of our users and guys, if you yeah. have any questions, let us know. We'll be here for yeah. a few minutes. And then, so, um, so I'm going to, uh, while, so while people are asking questions, um, so I went around our lazy Susan table last night okay. and I said, okay, guy, I want everybody to say, what is your favorite green leafies? And so my wife, Jill said, beet greens and spinach. And I said, well, why? And she said, man, rip beet greens. I feel like, um, eating the earth and i like the earth i okay. love the earth okay. and you know beets are very earthy beet greens are obviously you know the the ears of the beet brain yeah. and so you know they they have a similar you know kind of earthy flavor to them and then the next thing she said was spinach because spinach is so insanely functional and versatile right i mean you can just put spinach in anything and it's very kind of for the most part neutral um and then and then my daughter sophie uh corey she said sauteed kale she likes the sauteed kale right with the um with the sofrito broth so she loves that or she also likes kale and i can't believe i forgot to mention this but she loves kale that's finally finally kind of diced up chiffonaded and then you to that you add one and a half avocado, a little bit of salt and lemon juice. And then it's basically like a kale ceviche. And then you take it in your hands and you just mush it up. And now you have basically the most amazing kale avocado salad ever. Okay. Wow. Right. And so she, that she loves that. She says, um, arugula, I'm not a huge fan of because it's spicy and bitter. Spinach doesn't taste like anything and broccoli is a mainstay because I love the way it kind of takes on different flavors and um, and lettuce is just plain. Yeah, what's 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 so great about lettuce? But you know how many how many 12, 13 year olds can talk? You know, just uh, rattle off six different green leafies, right? Like that. It's better than me. That it's was incredible. cool. And then and then my youngest daughter Hope, she said, "Oh, it's easy. It's kale and broccoli, and with broccoli and and the." Broccoli, Corey, this is how I want everybody to try it. So get a get a pot, put in a little bit of water in the bottom, then put in your steamer basket, then put in your broccoli, you know, cut it up however you want it to, your broccoli in the steamer basket, and then put the lid on it, and then put that stovetop on high for 10 minutes. Okay. At 10 minutes, it should be perfectly done. Dump it out on a plate, and that add just like a sprinkling of pepper and salt, and, and as Hope said, and that, oh, mm, oh my God, right? So that's how I want you all to try your broccoli. And, uh, and then she also loved um, kale. And then Cole, my son, it is broccoli all day long, every day. doesn't matter if it's frozen. doesn't matter if it's fresh. And then spinach, he loves throwing spinach in soups, casseroles. And he all, he's an athlete, so he does like 
couple smoothies a week and he loves throwing them in smoothies. So, okay. all right, there you go. I am, I am done. I can now address questions. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go quick. We gotta go quick because I wanna give everybody the thing right. uh, that we're giving away. Okay, what we're gonna give away, we're gonna give away this Supper Bowl, all right? So it's not it's not that football game that's played in February. We're not, that's <laughs> trademark. This is yeah. the Supper Bowl, people. So I want you to comment, send me the Supper Bowl guide. If you send that, we're gonna send it to you on Facebook in a DM. If you're watching on YouTube, we still love you, it's all good. We'll send it to you uh, in in the, the comments and in the description of the YouTube video right after this is over, okay? But it's totally mm -hmm. free. We're going to send it to you. And then I also, before we address these questions, I promised you I would tell you what's going on with the website. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you this, all right? Right now, we are trying to move some inventory so that we can make room for another bit of inventory. And it's right here. And it is our multi-grain flakes, guys. Now listen, this is only through this weekend or while supplies last. So if you're thinking about this, I mean, this is absolutely insane. We never do this. It's a $44 product. It's $22 right now. There's no code needed. Just go to the site and grab it. Now yep. tell me about these multi-grain flakes. Like what's the deal? Well, they are insanely like, <laughs> they're insanely hearty. It's like Special K or Wheaties, you know, on steroids, but yeah. good plant-based steroids. <laughs> uh, and and I, I, I will say that the, the dates and the raisins in this, um, they have a tendency, I think it's because what we discovered is, unlike the Rips Big Bowl cereals that... Um, that have a, a variety of different whole grains in it. Something about these like studly flakes, yeah. they like hydro, hydroscopically absorbing the water from the dates and the raisins. So you may find that they're a little harder than you're used to. So I, I would recommend just know that. And then you could throw it in the microwave right before you eat it, or you can put it on um, some oatmeal yeah. to help heat it up. But this is a um, this is a fabulous fabulous way to start your day. Put some on top of your Rips Big Bowl for a little crunch or whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're gonna get right into it. That's everything for you guys. Um, I love sautéed in baby spinach. Okay, that was a comment. Do you include microgreens? I'm guessing those are sprouted, right? Microgreens. I if if you if you want to do sprouts, if you want no microgreens actually are different than sprouting okay. and sprouts, but microgreens are great. Absolutely. I can tell you that I, I don't microgreen. Um, but if you're doing it good for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. this question of fruits or just vegetables for diabetes. I don't know if we can like say that because everybody's yeah. individual situation is very unique to them. Yeah. I would go check out mastering diabetes. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Michael, Michael Bat Batco wants to know any nuts or oils in the uh, multigrain cereals. And the answer is no. Okay. Yeah. So if they were following your father's plan, that would be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, should yep. we worry about, Oh, this Colleen, is Colleen says it's only showing 10% off on the website. Oh, that's, that's Whatever. a pop up that everybody gets every okay. time you go to the site. So no, yep. um, the 10% off is for new customers. This this right here is a 50% off. You don't have to have any code or anything like that. Just add it to your cart. It'll be good to go. Um, okay, so Roundup. Do we have to worry about Roundup in our greens? I don't know. Are you spraying your greens with Roundup? I hope not. Not those. Well, I think what they're talking about there is the glyphosate, uh, you know, that that's, that's out there. And, um, well, I would tell you this. I mean, if if that is something that is a concern to you, then I would just make sure that you're buying organic greens. And, and then that should uh, basically, that will eliminate that uh, issue. Um, you know, one of the, one of the um, items that is known for having glyphosate in it are, are oats. Um, and which is one of the reasons why we, um, we typically uh, always try and use organic oats in our products. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see what else we got. Smoothies versus eating greens normally. <laughs> you know what? I, I'd like to actually punt this to, uh, to have a, a whole, uh, a whole Facebook live just on smoothies versus eating greens normally. And, and in fact, maybe what we do, Corey, is we invite my dad to be part of, oh, part wow. of a, a, a Facebook live. That'd be huge. We should How's call that it, sound? 
we should call it the reason you don't drink your calories. That's what we should call it. <laughs> well, or the reason why you want to always chew your green leafies. Yeah, let's let's talk about what we should do, not what we shouldn't. That's right. Um, Michael okay. Bat, Michael Batco, look at him. He's saying, "Rip, you're the best." Michael, you're the best. <laughs> uh, a couple other questions. Wow, there's so many questions. I'm trying to go back and forth. I know, I know. A lot of people saying, "Send me the Super Bowl," which is great. Thank you. We will. We will DM it to you or we'll, we'll add it to the uh, YouTube flavor, uh, the YouTube channel there. So um, there's one more big question here, Rip. Um, it's from Barbara. And I don't know if we can answer this, but I want to get to her question. My partner has kidney stones. has been told not to eat spinach because it has high oxalates. But you say it blocks absorbance of calcium, which makes up his stones. I'm confused. Should he eat spinach or not? Will cooking destroy the oxalates? And I know you can't give medical advice. <laughs> yeah. <thank> uh, you. <laughs> well, you know what I would tell you to do, Barbara? is go to nutri nutritionfacts.org and put that in the search engine there. Cause I'm, and I'm sure that Dr. Michael Greger has a whole little four to six minute segment on uh, kidney stones and oxalates and, uh, and green leafies. Um, but I, uh, I am not uh, versed enough in this to uh, offer you the advice you're looking for. Sorry. It's all good. It's all good. We try the best we can. And that's everything, guys. Um, I'm going to tell you one more time uh, that this, I, I didn't even mention the website, but it's plantstrongfoods.com. And that's where you can take advantage of this 50% off deal that we have going on while supplies last through the weekend. You know, all that stuff you're supposed to say about marketing, but it's true. Um, this, this, this product is going to just fly off the shelves here because we're making room. We're clearing out the inventory and we're making room for yeah. a brand new product. A brand new product that's going to come in the most gorgeous light blue bag you've ever seen. Can't wait. Yeah. It's and it's a cereal. Product. It's a cereal. I mean, maybe we could we can let people know that. All right. uh, so Susan Patton wants to know, cook, cook greens versus raw greens. Is one better than the other? And you know what, Susan? That is a fantastic question. And my answer to you is this. I don't care. I don't care just as long as you're consuming green leafies. Um, I don't care if it's raw, cooked, sauteed, baked. Um, uh, what else, Corey? Boiled. Seriously, yeah. my mom loves boiling her kale for wow. like five or six minutes. Now, are you going to lose some, some uh, nutrition when you do that? Sure, probably. But it depends upon the green leafy. Or, or I should say, whether it's broccoli, cauliflower, you know, Swiss, Swiss, uh, Swiss chard, you name it. Because some, some things are diminished, but in others, when you cook it, they're enhanced. So I think it all kind of washes out at the end of the day. So uh, just as long as you're consuming it, if you prefer raw, if you prefer cooked, just start gobbling it up. Hope that helps. Um, yeah. Uh, drinking your calories. Okay. We are good. I've got I've got that show on the docket, so I made sure to remember. Great, that. great. Yeah, uh, you know, Julie here says she loves broccoli, like how I described, drizzled with ninja squirrel sriracha. You know what, Julie? I am all like in agreement with you. That is my go-to sriracha, the ninja squirrel, that yeah. was developed by my good friend Derek Sarnow. Uh, uh, you know, when we worked together at Whole Foods, and it is. It's a dreamy sriracha. Love it. All right, everybody, we're going to get out of here. Uh, we love you so much. We really appreciate you tuning in. And, you know, there's there's an update coming to the community, too. This is, this is big, guys. Oh. As we go into the holidays, we want you to know we are setting you up for success. There is a brand new Plant Strong Holiday Guide that is going to be coming out any second. And, guys, if you are wondering what to eat during the holidays, if you're wondering – how to bring your food to a party and have everyone ask you what's in it. And then you tell them there's no oil, it's plant strong, it's delicious, and everybody's raving about it. Well, you got to get this guide. It's the only guide you're going to need for the holidays. It's not available now, but it will be very soon. We've got an upgrade, a massive upgrade to the community. If you're in the plant strong community right now, you know, because we asked you, how can we make this thing better for you? You told us. And in the next few days slash week, big changes are coming all for you because Woo! we love you, here for you. We're showing up for you, not only every Friday at two o'clock Eastern, but, uh, but throughout the holidays and also as we go into 
the new year. So we can't wait to continue to support you. We can't wait to highlight you and tell your story and uh, and just continue to show up for you. So thanks everyone for tuning in and, and Rip, you take us out. I am. And as I take you out, remember, this was all about green leafies. Susan Maddox Decker asked, how much green leafies should you eat in a day? A green leafy, I'm going to define as the size of a, your fist. All right. So that's a serving of green leafies. Susan, I want you doing four to six servings a day, four to six. All right. And I'm telling you, it's not that hard, but you got to have those green leafies in your house. And I want you to know frozen is fine. I don't care if it's frozen broccoli, frozen, um, frozen kale. It's crazy these days what they're doing in yeah. frozen and the number yeah. of green leafies, like, you know, cauliflower. I haven't seen arugula in the frozen section. No, no. Uh, right. But some of the hardier ones, absolutely. But, you know, I will say, Hey gang, I challenge you this weekend to do at least four servings of green leafies on Saturday and Sunday. Yep. All right. That's a good challenge. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So four fist size servings right. and, right, and ASAP will get my father, Essie. We'll get him on this show and we'll talk all about why you want to chew your green leafies. You don't want to drink them, which a lot of Americans are doing. Incredible. Well, maybe if we can get him off the bike, <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what we can do. Yeah. All right, everybody have a wonderful weekend. We'll see